welcome back to DC Today on Thursday, February 15th. Great to be back with you all again from Newport Beach, California in the nice studio we have here. Um, and also nice day in markets, really. we uh, If I could have a chart every day that looked like today's chart, I will take that on basically any investment because it really just kept climbing higher the entire day. We closed at the highs. The Dow was up 348 points, which is nice. Um, S&P and the NASDAQ were, were below. Part of that move was large cap energy. Oil was up 2% today. So you had some energy stocks on the move higher, um, which, is, which is good to see. The 10-year um, yield closed at 424, so it's down two bips on the day. Not a lot of movement there, although after Tuesday's inflation data you know, and the run-up in rates, we've now given back quite a bit of that run-up. And the um, Ten-year is about nine basis points higher than before that number, and the two years up maybe ten basis points. So, really, that's not much at all, as best as I can tell you. Um, jobless numbers today were were uh, a little better than expected. We got two twelve for January versus two twenty. Again, labor market still looks really good on on uh, in my terms, and I just don't buy into the fact that um, some have said that we need to you know have unemployment in order to see inflation coming down. Inflation is moving lower. Anyway, so we'll, t we'll, we'll hopefully keep, keep those jobs. Uh, and again, I'd say good news is just good news uh, rather than reading into it more than that. Um, manufacturing data today out of Empire State and also Philadelphia, both better than expected. So some bright spot in manufacturing. Again, good news is good. Um, and then on the economic side, retail sales was disappointed. My caveat in the, what I wrote is just month to month, you're trying to understand what consumers are going to spend their money on and, and how they're going to do it, I just think is a moving target. I wouldn't read into it too much, especially just for one month. And we, we can see the other growth numbers and the other metrics. We're, we're, in, we're in decent shape. Um, you know, it is December and, and January, so there's the winter to, uh, or the weather to blame, I suppose. Um, there's also a, a shift into more services versus some other things and experiences. So there, there's all those things, but all in all, um, I'll chalk up today, economically speaking, as a good day in markets. And I think markets, um, the Dow being up the way it was, was responsive to that. Um, we got um, negative GDP numbers in both the UK and in Japan for Q4. And both of those countries had negative numbers uh, in Q3. So that's two quarters in a row. And um, and so that's a recession. So they, they've got a recession there in, in both UK and Japan. Japan was the the one that was more surprising because Q3 was a, a pretty significant down number of negative 3.3. So to follow through with a negative 4.4 um, is fairly meaningful. They technically, not by a lot, but lost their third spot um, on the world GDP stage to Germany. So uh, Japan is now the fourth largest economy and when I was growing up, it was the second largest. So, you know, I suppose this term that we've thrown around called Japanification, there's probably no better place that personifies that economically than, than Japan. The market there, though, has not been bad. The stock market has actually um, been a, a, an outperformer the last 12 months. So, so go figure. Those two things are not always correlated. In fact, they usually aren't um, economic output directly to stock market performance um, in the same year. Um, all that to say, other uh, statement I had in there, there was literally I'd walked from the conference room in to record this and, and so left a meeting and, and just recorded the question that I had from that meeting there. But it was really around real estate. We get this question often, but um, do we help clients uh, with, uh, with complex sometimes real estate portfolios or, or frankly large inherited real estate assets and they're trying to figure out you know, how to pass it to the next generation, how to keep things tax efficient, you know, exchange um, ideas, 1031s, you know, do we, do, we, do we help with that? And of course we really do. It's, it's an area of speciality, uh, frankly. We, of course, will use outside realtors when we need to have someone, you know, have a, you know, you know charge a commission and process paperwork and things like that. And um, I'm not downplaying the profession. I think there's a lot of value to it. My point was more just, I think when you start sometimes with roads leading back to a transaction in the beginning of a conversation versus going to your fiduciary and going through the um, ins and outs of the whole deal uh, and all the options on the table, sometimes, number one, transactions are not needed. Um, 
and uh, and then number two, I just have found it removes a conflict to to some of those those important decisions. Um, but yeah, we help with uh, really complex and interesting things. A lot of our institutional partners um, have uh, Delaware statutory trust arrangements, so DSTs that we can use. We uh, 721 upreads, you know, and and like I said, it it doesn't always come to something happening, but um, we certainly have a lot of uh, resources to help help folks out if that's something that is needed. Um, with that, I'm going to let you go for the day. It's Thursday. It's been a heck of a week for me, a good one, but busy. And so I'm going to get back to it. I want to get you back to your day. Uh, thank you for listening as it's always good to be with you. Uh, reach out with your questions as always. Tomorrow we'll have Dividend Cafe in the inbox as we always do. And then we'll hit the weekend. So with that, I'll let you go. Thanks for listening.